Let's pray together, please. Lord, we hunger for you. There is deep hunger and thirst inside each one of us. And sometimes it can feel like fatigue and sometimes it can feel like loneliness and sometimes it can feel like uh, frustration and sometimes it can feel like some kind of emptiness, but ultimately we know our deepest longings are only satisfied by you. Help us, Lord to be satisfied by you and to help other people find satisfaction in you as well. Through Christ we pray, amen. Deep inside every human heart, God has placed an eternal longing for him. Eternal longings for eternal things that can only be satisfied by him. That's why the psalmist would write in Psalm 82 verse two, my soul longed and even yearned for the courtyards of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy for the living God. The psalmist more than once says, my soul longs for God. Ecclesiastes 3.11 is classic. God has placed eternity into the hearts of human beings. We all have eternal longings that can only be satisfied when they're connected to eternal things. We have eternal longings for lasting peace, eternal longings for relationships that won't end, eternal longings for purpose, for life and purpose in suffering. We have eternal longings to know who am I? I mean, in the depths of my soul, who am I and why am I here? Eternal longings for hope that cannot be taken away, that'll never end. That's why Augustine made that classic statement that God has made us all with a restlessness and our souls will not be at rest until they find rest in God. One of the saddest things in life is when people feel the eternal longings, but they never connect those eternal longings to the eternal creator, to God's eternal things. When we look around us today and we see people's frustrations and fatigues, when we see people and with a sense of emptiness, when we see people trying to find satisfaction in ambition and money and entertainment and popularity and you know controlling things so the world can be can go their way candidly even the the longings that people have the, the, that climate change um, fears provoke they're eternal longings for eternal things that can only be satisfied when connected to God. And this is part of the reason why we need to share the gospel with people because people are made for God. I was reminded of this, our, our eternal longings and how universal they are recently when I saw that Captain Kirk finally made a voyage into the final frontier. Maybe you saw William Shatner as a 90-year-old man became the oldest person ever to fly into outer space. The man who was Captain Kirk on the original Star Trek. I remember loving to watch that as a kid. Um, and the reruns even kind of are, make me a bit nostalgic. But took a flight nearly 66 miles um, into outer space that lasted just over 10 minutes in totality. When he returned, he broke down. Did you see the interview or hear what he had to say? In tears, he said, it was so moving to me. The experience is something unbelievable. I hope I never recover from this. Now that's a pretty impressive line from a man who's experienced so many things in this world that you think would be able to satisfy his longings. He's experienced life at a level that most people never will. I mean, Shatner is a Hollywood legend. Besides starring in Star Trek, the original, he also has starred in movies. He has cut albums. Who knew? He was a singer. He's written books. He's hosted award shows and beauty pageants. He has three kids from four different wives. He's written at least five autobiographies. Now you must have a lot to say if you've written five stories about yourself. And yet nothing 
prepared him for the longings that would be exposed in space. Once there, Shatner said that he had thought about a number of clever things, but before he got there, he thought about a number of clever things that he was going to say. But he said, once I got there, everything that I thought might be clever to say went out the window. He described his experience in space as seeing the universe from outside this way, from the outside of the universe atmosphere this way. He said it was death. He said that was death and this was life. And everything else just stood still for a moment. I was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed with the experience, with the sensation of looking at death and looking at life. Talk about eternal longings. A friend of mine noted, fighting back tears, Shatner explained, to see the blue cover whip by, now you're staring into blackness. This comforter of blue that we have around us here on earth. We think, oh, that's the blue sky. And then suddenly you shoot through it. All of a sudden, like you whip off a sheet when you've been asleep and you're looking into this blackness. Is, is this death, he asked? Is that death? Is that the way death is? Jeff Bezos was the one who sponsored Shatner's flight. When he got back, he said to Bezos, what you've given me is the most profound experience I can imagine. I am overwhelmed. I had no idea. During the flight, Shatner tweeted a quote from Isaac Newton, the great physicist and writer of, very, of a lot of... Um, uh, Bible commentaries as well. Newton, he quoted Newton as saying, I do not know what I may appear to the world, but to myself I seem to have been only like a boy playing on the sea seashore, diverting myself in now and then finding a smoother pebble or a prettier shell than ordinary whilst the great ocean of truth lay all undiscovered before me. Did you hear what he just said? He quotes, he quotes Isaac, Sir Isaac Newton, and he says, when I got into outer space, what I realized was all my life I've been like a little boy playing in a sandbox, thinking this is all that is real and all that is important only now to realize there is a great ocean of truth all undiscovered before me. God has placed eternity in our hearts and we are restless until we find our rest in him. As great as that actor, as that actor's life is, isn't that amazing? He says what he discovered in outer space is there's something much greater than the life he's experienced. As much as he's experienced here on earth, he says there's something so much more yet to be known. As big as his experience on earth has been, he says there's something much bigger beyond this blue cover around us. There is a great ocean of truth all undiscovered before me. Chew on that today this great ocean of truth all undiscovered before me. Those are eternal longings for a transcendent God. I think this is how the Apostle Paul must have felt when he wrote the words of Romans chapter 11. You know, the book of Romans is called The Gospel According to Paul. For 11 chapters, Paul has been writing at some depth the great truth about the scheme of redemption, about God and his nature and man and his fallenness. And he comes to the end of all this and he writes in Romans eleven thirty three, Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. It's almost as like William Shatner's experience when he gets into outer space and sees the reality of the world. 
is kind of what the Apostle Paul experiences after he's gone through this 11 chapters of great theology. And he thinks about God. And he writes, how unsearchable are his judgments, and unfathomable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord and who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him that he might be paid back to him, that it would be paid back to him? See, God's not in anybody's debt. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. The gospel according to Paul. In the first chapter, what's he say? God created and God revealed himself to us. But people have rebelled. In chapter 2, he kind of doubles down on that. Not only did the Gentiles rebel, but chapter 2, the Jewish people who were given the revelation from God. They didn't just have the creation. They had the revelation from God, and yet they rebelled as well. Chapter 3, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And Paul spends the next few chapters going into greater detail, explaining about sin and faith as we've seen first in Abraham and that being made, uh, counted as righteousness and grace and, and peace in the fifth chapter of our Lord, Jesus, through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this new relationship that we have because of Christ, Paul explains in these three analogies in chapter six and seven, the, the baptism analogy and the slave martyr analogy and the marriage analogy in chapter seven. And he goes on there in chapter um Eight, which is beautiful, uh, wonderful, practical ch chapter there. But in, in, you know, now there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And then chapter nine through eleven, he goes into the sovereignty of God, and trying to understand the sovereignty of God and the way He has worked and and determining all of things and how great His power and knowledge is. And Paul comes to the end of eleven chapters of pondering these great, deep thoughts of God, like you find really articulated in no other single section of Scripture. And he comes to the end of all of this. And what's he do? He puts, I picture him putting down his pen and sitting back. And he is just, before, he's about to go into this very practical teaching. He's going, going from kind of theological teaching to very practical application in, in, in chapters 12 um, uh, through 15, um, before it's 16, he, he has the signing off to people. But before going to this really practical section, he just stops and he breaks into a doxology. See, where Paul is different from a, a person who does not know God, a person who does not go experiences these eternal longings and they don't know what to do with them. Is this death? Is this life? I mean, what, there's so much more here to be understood, to be discovered. Paul still comes to this point. There's so much here to be understood, but he's able to break into worship and offers a doxology of God. Oh, I know the depths of this truth. I know the one that I long for, the one who is bigger than this blue color, this, this blue cover the one who is the great ocean of truth that I'm still discovering. Oh, the depths of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. For who's known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Isn't that great? The next time you question God, the next time you think, the Bible is contradictory, or you're, we're smarter than the Bible. Who's known mind, the mind of the Lord? Wh who does God go to to get counsel? Not us. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Somehow I suspect that is the praise that we're going to offer God in heaven. I love that doxology. William Shatner says, there's this great ocean of truth all undiscovered before me. Paul says, there's this great ocean of truth and he has a name. He is Yahweh God. He is Jesus Christ. 
today take a few moments to step outside yourself, read some scripture, and see this world through the eyes of God and see God a little bit better, a little bit more clearly. What you are feeling are eternal longings that can only be satisfied when connected to an eternal God. Worship Him and then share Him. There's an ocean of truth that we all long for and we who know God through Jesus Christ have the joy to be able to connect those eternal longings to eternal things. And as a result, our lives have peace and we have purpose and we know who we are and we have confidence in our eternity. But how sad that, there are, that we live in a world of people who are still playing in the sandbox thinking that's the whole world. Let's share with people this Jesus who is the universal truth, who is, who to know, to know right is life eternal. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you have made us with your eternal spirit. We long for you. I thank you that you satisfy us I thank you that you satisfy our need for forgiveness because of Jesus Christ. I thank you that you satisfy us with our need for purpose and hope because Jesus Christ is sufficient. I thank you that you satisfy us and our need for companionship because you are always with us and you never forsake us. I thank you that we know that we will see you one day face to face and we will say, Everything is from you and for you and returns to you. May your name be praised. You are worthy of praise. Help, help us to live that way today and to share that with other people who have the eternal longings but haven't made the connections. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you soon.